Sisters, brothers, siblings in Christ, grace and peace to you from the God of our Lord Jesus Christ. Jesus was praying in a certain place, and after he had finished, one of his disciples said to him, Lord, teach us to pray. Jesus said to them, when you pray, say, Father, hallowed be your name. This prayer we, of course, know well. We pray this Lord's Prayer every Sunday, and many of us probably pray it daily at home as well. In this prayer, we ask God to send his kingdom to provide us with our daily physical, emotional, mental, and spiritual needs, everything that proclaims the time of the Lord's favor. In truth, Jesus taught us that to pray is to remind God of all the promises that God has ever made, and to demand that God keep them. All those verbs that Jesus just taught, they're all in the imperative. God, you better do it. And this is what Jesus taught us. Teaching us what to pray, however, is not enough. Jesus also knew he needed to teach us how to pray. And so he told the parable of the midnight request. My mother told me that growing up in a time before there was cars with air conditioning, if her family wanted to take a trip to, say, California for vacation, they would leave Tucson after sundown and drive through the night in order to avoid the heat, the great heat of the Mojave Desert night or day. In many ways, the people of Palestine did the exact same thing. They, too, would leave at sundown and travel through the relative cool of the night, and then hopefully arriving at a relative's house around midnight or so. And along the those, a whole journey would be planned out this way, planning out who you would arrive at and staying with rich relatives along the way. As such, receiving visitors at midnight would not have been all that uncommon. But hospitality also demanded that the host provide those unexpected guests and visitors with some food after their long journey. Now, sometimes you might have some fresh bread left over from that day, but sometimes you might be, well, fresh out. And so in order to save yourself from embarrassment, you'd head over to one of your neighbors whom you were sure to help you. Suppose one of you has a friend, and you go to him at midnight and say to him, friend, Lend me three loaves of bread, for a friend of mine has arrived, and I have nothing left to set before him. And he answers from within, Do not bother me. The door is already locked, and my, my children are in bed with me. I cannot get up and give you anything. I tell you, said Jesus, even though he will not get up and help him, give him anything, because he is his friend. At least through because of his persistence, he will get up and give him whatever he needs. To be honest, Jesus' words today seem, well, kind of strange to my ears. It sounds as though Jesus is, is teaching us to pester God with our prayers until God finally breaks down and gives in to us whatever it is that we demand. It sounds as though we're supposed to behave like spoiled children. This is especially so when I go on to read Jesus' next words when he says, So I say to you, ask, and it will be given to you. Well, while digging deeper into the Greek in an effort to really try to figure out what was really being said in this passage, I discovered that Jesus' words, so I say to you, can also be translated as, but I say to you. In other words, Jesus is striking a contrast. You see, Jesus' parable highlights the pagan way of prayer in his day. Pagans had to constantly to, had to constantly pester their gods, shouting their prayers, just as the priests of Baal did in their showdown with Elijah all those years before. Now, some pagans did this because they believed that their gods just didn't really care about humanity. You had to shout to get their attention and annoy them just enough to get to them to respond, but not too much so that they struck you down. Pagans had to walk this fine line between persistence and disrespect. Others believed that the gods were forbidden to show humanity any compassion whatsoever. Consider the story of the Greek god Prometheus. One day, Prometheus looked down from 
Mount Olympus and saw humanity toiling in darkness and despair. And so to ease humanity's suffering, Prometheus had compassion and brought the forbidden fire from Olympus down to humanity, who then promptly proceeded to want more and more from the gods. Outraged at Prometheus, Zeus had him chained to a rock while, it, uh, while a vulture endlessly ate his insides. Why his guts, you say, or ask? Because the word, the word for guts and the word for compassion have the same root, splach. <laughs> Thus, the moral of the story is no guts, no compassion, no humanity being codependent upon the gods. Well, we may rejoice that we are not pagans, but worshipers of God who is compassionate. Let us also be honest with ourselves. <laughs> There is still that pagan within all of our hearts that rears up its ugly head when we distrust whether God really cares about us or even hears our prayers. There persists within us an echo of the serpent's words to Adam and Eve that accused God of being uncaring and a liar, of being fearful and a scrooge. But Jesus says, your heavenly father is not like that. Ask, and it will be given to you. Seek, dig deeper, and you will find. Knock, and the door will be opened to you. Is there anyone among you who, if your child asks for a fish, will give a snake instead of a fish? Or if the child asks for an egg, will you give a scorpion? All right, well, with Rich, that might be, <laughs> that might be appropriate, but normally... If you then, who are evil, know how to give good gifts to your children, how much more will your heavenly Father give the Holy Spirit to those who ask him? Instead of being the great killjoy with a perpetual frown, the, the ever-watchful eye in the sky, ready to pounce and, and punish sinners, Jesus portrays God as generous, steadfast, and trustworthy. Someone who loves not only hearing our prayers, but answering them as well. No, not that pony, that sports car, or those winning lottery numbers. God has something even better to give. The Holy Spirit and all her gifts. Love, joy, peace, patience, kindness, faithfulness, generosity, gentleness, and self-control, just to name a few. Money? cannot buy these treasures. In the Lord's Prayer, Jesus is not simply teaching us what to pray for, but how to pray, how to understand the one to whom we pray. Jesus is inviting us to experience God, not as an aloof God who has to be persistently pestered in order to get his attention, but as our one true friend, who is gracious, forgiving, and abounding in steadfast love, the one who rejoices in blessing us with the good gifts of the Holy Spirit. And with this perspective, we can then begin to see life, our neighbors, and, and our own selves in a new light as lovable, forgivable, and redeemable. And if we're codependent, well, God can heal that too. <laughs> And living in a world right now that seems to be going berserk, in a world that is drowning in fear, caught up in a vicious cycle where polarization begets more polarization and violence begets more violence, we need more now than ever those gifts of the Holy Spirit. Today the world cries out, be afraid, fear your neighbor who doesn't look and think and act like you. But Jesus says to us, ask, seek, Knock. In other words, pray, pray, pray. Pray for the Holy Spirit. Pray for the gifts of the Holy Spirit. Pray that God's steadfast love dwells in you deeply so that you may be a faithful witness to God's abundant, crucified, and resurrected love in the face of all that fear, polarization, and violence. Truly, prayer is not for us to get what we want. That's why that fearful pagan in us prays. 
Rather, we pray so that that fearful pagan in all of us may be converted. We pray so that we can reflect the God in whose image we have been created. We pray so that we may be tangible signs of God's presence in this world, for the sake of this world, the very same fear-filled world that God so loved that he sent his only son to bring good news and redemption and, liber and liberation to proclaim the time of the Lord's compassionate favor. Amen.